Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. If you're um, new here, we're really glad to have you. Again, I'm Michael from Overland Bound. Before we jump right into this video, I want to cover something. We have a slogan, one of our major sayings is, it doesn't matter what you drive. What do we mean by that? It can be contentious. People are like, it absolutely matters what you drive. I want to make a point here. No, the reason we say it doesn't matter what you drive is because what we mean is we don't care if it's a Toyota, a Land Rover, a Jeep, or some other manufacturer. Everyone's welcome. They're, they can all be outfitted to overland and go out and explore. It does matter where you drive it. So you don't want to be unsafe. You want to be prepared for what you're asking your vehicle to do, and you want to make sure your vehicle is up to the task. That's what we mean. It doesn't matter what you drive, it doesn't matter where you drive it, and holy cow, this vehicle, you could drive it just about anywhere. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, I'm excited. I'm talking to George. And George, you have Unimog Center. We saw you here last year. Yeah. And I kind of crawled under your, your rig and, and checked it out. Um, this thing is, this thing's amazing. Um, what are we looking at here? You're looking at a 1990 Mercedes-Benz Unimog. It's um, a U1300L, which is kind of a common um, design. It's a, it was originally a NATO ambulance, so this has an ambulance back in it. Uh-huh. Um, and it's, uh, it's got a six liter, six cylinder, turbo diesel engine, big truck engine in it, heavy duty drivetrain, heavy duty gearbox. It's got locking differentials, you can see. It's got coil springs that articulate really well. Um, and it's kind of a, a really good model of Unimog to use for like overlanding and that type of thing. Um, so right now, just based on what you said, I, I already have a bunch of questions. So um, in terms of the engine itself, yeah. reliability, uh, diesel mileage. Super reliable. Yeah. This yeah. is a Mercedes engine that uh, basically they do a million kilometers on it before you overhaul it. That's about 600,000 miles. Wow. Gets about 11 miles to the gallon on average. Okay. Uh, if you're going a little slower, it'll get about 14 miles to the gallon. And a little slower is how much for So this, this, rig? this truck will go 63 miles an hour down the highway. Yep. It won't go 64. Mm -hmm. um, it'll go 63 <laughs> all day long. Right. But it runs out of gears, not power. Yeah. So you just keep your foot pegged to the bottom and you look at 63 miles an hour and you pray Kansas is going to finish. <laughs> but um, it gets about, yeah, it gets, and that it kind of gets around nine or 10. Yeah. If you bring it down to like 45 miles an hour, like secondary roads or just bumbling along, yeah. then it's more like uh, 15 miles to the gallon, 14 okay. miles to the gallon. Um, and it's happier doing that. It's, yeah. It doesn't like really being on highways. Got it. Um, what about the, um, the availability of parts for the engine? So the great thing about Mercedes is they make parts for their vehicles 25 years after it's discontinued. Mm -hmm. This is a 25 year old truck. 99% of the parts are available. The engine in this is a, is a industrial Mercedes engine. There are millions of them. They make them in Brazil, they make them in China. So you can still buy parts for, especially for the engine, but for all of this, you can buy parts. Great. Some of them you might cry at how much they cost, but they're, uh -huh. they're available, all uh -huh. of them. Um, so somebody wants to, I, I walk by and, and we start having a conversation to take a random situation. And I say, hey, I want to end up with one of these. What is the process, the lead time, if you want to share the cost? So you know? sure, this, uh, a Unimog like this is, a, um, is approximately $40,000. Mm -hmm. Your price range is going to be kind of between thirty dollars and $50,000. Um, I import these vehicles, so if you bought it from me, it would come with a U.S. registration. It's EPA and DOT. Everything is done. Mm -hmm. You can buy these in Europe and import them yourself. They have to be 25 years old. Um, it's a little complicated, but it's certainly possible. It's certainly some, something someone could do if they wanted to. Yeah. Um, and there are other people besides myself that sell these. So mm -hmm. you, usually you kind of hunt around on, online. However, um, they're, they're not 
there's not a lot of availability for these. If there's like a truck that you really like, it's not like I can go out and get another five of these tomorrow. Right. Um, they're right. kind of specialized vehicles and most Unimogs were custom made for the customer. So no two Unimogs are alike. Mm -hmm. So it can be a little difficult if you saw some really cool Unimog and you said, I want that one. It may be hard to find. Right, either that or you have to try and buy that one. Right, or you have to just <laughs> adapt and, and you know, the thing is these are kind of like, um, Unimog stands for Universal Motor Grate, which means a universal implement carrying machine. Yeah. So this thing today could be a camper, mm -hmm. and next week I could be I could put a sander on this and a plow and use it to maintain my driveway, which I do. Mm -hmm. um, you can convert and change. It's like Legos. So you take one off and you put the other on. Yep. So you can always adapt and modify this vehicle. Um, th again, this is a stock vehicle. I haven't even you know. I don't think I've even washed it. Um, yeah. So, and they, cosmetically, you know, you could do this over with a paint job and it would it would totally transform it into something else. Cool, that is awesome. I, if I wanna if I wanna change a tire, tell me about that. So changing the tires, and I rotated these tires myself kind of in my garage. Um, so basically, they're very heavy. Yep. But what you just do is you just jack the tire up about an inch you take it off, you knock it off, and then you bring your jack back down an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. You lean the next tire up against it, and then you jack it up, and as the, as the stud lines up with the hole, you push it in, and then you keep jacking it up. So you don't have to do any heavy lifting. This is the type of thing you could change on, I have changed on the side of the highway. Yeah. Um, you know, I've used these in Africa, and I've had flats out in the middle of nowhere, um, and it's just me. And, mm -hmm. It's not fun, <laughs> but, yeah. but it's definitely something that somebody can do. In that case, do you use just a standard uh, string plug repair kit or does it, it depend um, on the To fix it, yeah, it kind of, yeah, you can just use a string plug unless it's on the side. Yeah. And um, normally what I do is I use heavier duty patches. Mm -hmm. So you would do something like a string plug just to get you home or get you to the next place where they can take the tire off the rim. Yeah. And then what you would do is take a, the, uh, it's a special radial patch. Mm -hmm. you patch it from the inside and it it helps protect the casing of the tire and normally that's that'll fix it uh, permanently cool maybe we can talk a little bit about um, the performance of this unimog articulation where you can take it yep. where, where so, it'll go where it won't go so this vehicle right now is approximately I'd say in the rear it's about 90% of what it can do and in the front it's at about 75% of its articulation. Uh -huh. I can drive right over these, these blocks um, and clear them. I can drive over these blocks anyway. You can put them under my truck, under the lowest point, I'm still going to go over it. Yep. What that allows you to do, because this vehicle will just shake it, it's got a lot of articulation and move, uh -huh. so it's going to go over the terrain. Um, it's not going to fight the terrain. So when you get out west around here, especially with this dry terrain where you have traction, you know, I can drive up 100% uh, grades. Um, it's, what's nice about it though is as a camper, a lot of people are not really into doing this total hardcore Moab thing. And they're like, why do I need a, a truck like that? But what's nice is if you're gonna use an expedition vehicle and you're really out on an expedition, you never wanna to get to 90% of the vehicle's capacity because right. it's risky. You know, if you're in the mm -hmm. Kalahari Desert, you don't wanna be pushing your vehicle to the limit. So this truck at 50% is that truck at 90%. Right. I'm doing the same trail he's doing, but I don't have to sweat it. Yeah. I can, I've got a very comfortable margin of error. Um, and that's one of the things that makes this vehicle really good. The rock, there's a big rock back there, and I actually drove, not that one, but another one that I drove over, and that might be the type of obstacle that you would get even on a forestry road. Yeah. That Jeep can go over it as well, but he's gonna really be worried about getting hung up and damaged and stuff. I just did it to, because right. I was gonna do a demo. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. That's one thing that we talk about a lot. You know, two vehicles will go over the same obstacle, but there will be a lot more drama with right. one vehicle versus right. the other. Right. right, yeah, usually bringing this up is just, I just walk up it, where yeah. other people, it's gonna be a really creepy, scary thing. They'll yeah. still get up, you know, and they'll get by. 
But what's nice is we there's not a lot of overhang on this truck. Things are hard. Yep. Um, there's no overhang in the back and underneath. There's nothing like a big transfer case sticking out the middle. Mm -hmm. So and you can kind of bang it around. And I, I you know I've used these in really really rugged terrain like in in Botswana. That's just it's just a constant pounding and pounding and pounding. And they're designed for that. The difference yeah. between a Unimog and almost all the other vehicles here is that the vehicles here are, are road going vehicles that are designed to have off road capability. So the Land Cruiser is really a street vehicle with off road capability. Right. This is an off road tractor yeah. with on road capability. Right. So the priority for this, this is not the type of vehicle you want to own if you want to drive you know you got to drive 70 miles and on the highway a lot to get to wherever you're going and it's only a weekend you know that this this is a at its core this is an off-road vehicle so right. you want to use it in an off-road setting um, and that's where it really it holds right. its own yeah and it's it's i mean it feels that way when you pass one on the road yeah when you pass one on the road you see it it's in the slow lane. Yep. It's chugging along to its next yep. off-road location, ready to get off the road, yep. ready to get off the pavement as soon as it can. That's right. I drove this. <laughs> I drove this all interstate highways from from New Hampshire, two and a half thousand miles. But it's a terrible vehicle to do that kind of driving with, you yeah. know. So it really shines once I got into the Rockies. Mm -hmm. And now, if you know, you go down trails in Colorado. I this has a tighter turning radius, or about the same as that Jeep. So it looks really big and cumbersome. It's an extremely nimble um, truck. It it has a very tight turning radius. Mm -hmm. um, so it allows me to pick my way through mountain passes. Um, they're a little scary because I'm a little wider, but I can make that turn um, and I can go places with this that that you would think it's too big, but in fact it has no problems wow. whatsoever. That's great. Um, what else um, What else do you think people should know about a Unimog if they don't know anything about it? But they look, so like somebody looks at this and they're like, that's badass, right? But they don't know a lot about it. What do you think might be an interesting thing for people to know? Well, what I would say is what we were kind of talking about is that this is not the type of vehicle you're gonna use to commute to work because it's yeah. really cool and it's got big tires. Yeah. This is the type of vehicle that you gotta honestly be doing 50% off-road and then uh -huh. it really justifies itself. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a daily driver type vehicle. Um, yeah. So I do get people who want it, you know, uh, just to, to tool around in and go to work in. And that usually, it's not what it's for, you know. Right. Um, it's like taking a Ferrari for grocery shopping. You know, you can do it, but it's yeah. not really what it's for. Yeah. But other than that, you know, they're, they're great vehicles. Like something like this, you don't have to spend 100000 or $200,000. A lot of people think that these things cost, you know, a, an exorbitant amount of money. They actually are, for what you're getting, they're pretty reasonable. And this is basically a camper. I, I set this one up in a weekend. And you can use this as a platform. And if you start basic, um, you don't have to buy a decked out, really expensive truck. And you can start with this and build and modify as you want. Um, right. And it's very accommodating because this back, um, you see this back, normally a vehicle that's under, is articulated this much, the body and the back, they're all gonna be under a lot of stress. So it's often, it's hard to even open a door. But as you can see, there's no stress on this cab. It, it's still got a lot of movement in it. So when you build a back on here, you don't have to engineer something really complicated. Yeah. Mercedes yeah. has already thought all that through. Mm -hmm. So you can use this truck as a flatbed. And again, if this truck was level on level ground, this is even with that. So right. that would come down here. So, but the truck is designed to do all this and it gives you the luxury of making a really easy back on it. You don't have to make this big, heavy duty, strong thing because it's not getting any tension. Cool, cool. So if I, uh, so here's a scenario for you. I get one of these and I build a habitat on the back yeah. um, where I can do work. Yeah. Like I have my computer back yeah, there. Yeah, I have one you know. back there now. All right, so I can do work. And then I get a trailer with a drop hitch for to tow my 80 series 
Land Cruiser. Okay, you wouldn't, I'll cut you off right there. That's why I asked. Yeah, you don't want to start towing with this. This truck, the fuel economy is pretty good on it, but that's because it's got a, a relatively low horsepower industrial engine. Got so it. I can do 61 miles an hour, 62 all day long in Kansas, and I can go through the hills a bit, but I can't start putting a lot of stuff behind it. Because then, then everything tanks. Right, then it's going to start <laughs> slowing down, right? It'll carry a lot of weight, um, but it basically, I, I was talking to a guy who wanted to pull a trailer with two motorcycles. That's fine. You know, it's not, yeah. not going to be a problem. But once you start, you know, the thing is you don't have to tow your Toyota because this goes where your Toyota goes, <laughs> right? And then you can still work on your computer wherever you were going to drive right. the Toyota. So you, that's the whole point is you so get rid of the Toyota. So a lifestyle change, right? So instead of like, it's funny, what we do right now is we'll go, we'll go, you know, 300 miles, 400 miles yep. in a day, the yep. lifestyle changes, slow down, slow down. No, I was doing four, 500 miles a day yeah. to get here, yeah. which is not fun, uh -huh. and, um, but it can do it. But the point is, is that now I can go out. I went out last year after the, the event, I went out into Moab and there were a bunch of guys at the trailhead in, uh, in stock, nice Jeeps. And a guy had a mod, moderately lifted pickup. Mm -hmm. And there was like a set of stairs, so to say, that they probably could have made it over those, but they didn't want to damage the vehicles and they weren't in for, you know, really risky stuff. And they're turning around and they saw me and they said, dude, you should go for it. And I did. And, and I basically took a trail that you could do in a Rubicon without too much difficulty. It'd be a little challenging. But once I got past that point, I had that whole trail to myself because it was far enough out of Moab yeah. that people don't want to take their Jeeps out there. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, I, had, I was on, parked on the side of a canyon with my fridge, I was, you know, <laughs> my computer, you know, I was just yep. chilling out. Um, you know, I wasn't allowed to make a fire because I was, you know, it's too dry, but basically just can hang out and, yep. I, and I don't have to like go back to my RV that's at the campground miles yeah. away. Yeah. Um, so I found that I used to drive, I still do drive like Defenders and things like that. Mm -hmm. This goes 90% of the places they go. And I got all this room in the back. I don't have, my bed's made, my computer's just set up. <laughs> um, you know, I work from this, that's you know? Cool. I got two solar panels on the, on the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got a split charge system. It just came with it. So it charges the batteries. Um, and I mean, I know people that they go for months at a time. You know, Germans come over here with a Unimog like this and they just disappear. You know, yeah. they're out west and you don't even see them that much because they're just poking around on. And they'll be, you know, as soon as they get cell phone reception, they'll check in on their on their laptop. You got power and, and yeah. all kind of stuff. So yeah. it's great like that. Um, you know, cool. it's not. It's a little bit of a compromise. It's not as good as having a full out RV. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're going to make some compromises. It's a bit smaller and it's not as great as having something like a smaller Defender. They're going to be places you can pick little trails on those that you can't do with this. But, you know, every vehicle is a compromise yeah. and, and this kind of hits the right spots for the type of travel that I do, which is very remote but with a little bit more comfort right. um, and a little more reliability. So I, I sometimes cool. go with my kids with this, you know, and that is awesome. And they, and they have a lot of fun. So my, my two year old daughter calls this the monkey truck. Cause she's, <laughs> she's, she can't get up the steps and gotta she hangs like, like a little monkey. So, <laughs> so I was just FaceTiming her earlier and she said, are you still in the monkey truck? And I'm like, yeah. So <laughs> that is awesome. George, thank you very much yeah. for the time. Thanks yeah. for sharing no and talking to us. Yeah, that is yeah. absolutely awesome. Always. And again, um, George at Unimog, Unimog Center. Center. Dot com. Com. Go, go and check it out if you want a Unimog. Get in I'm touch ready with to George. help you out. He's ready to help you out. Right on. Thanks. Thanks.